All right, happy Friday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. We are closely monitoring what is happening in the tropics. We do have some trouble brewing right over central Cuba, and this will likely be a big problem for Florida over the next few days. What am I talking about? Well, we've got a potential tropical cyclone on our hands. This is potential tropical cyclone four. And as you can see, it is kind of blowing up right over the central area of Cuba. And it is expected to continue to push off to the west northwest and eventually make more of a turn to the north, likely heading very close to the state of Florida for tomorrow and likely making landfall Sunday and Monday. So we've got to watch this closely, depending on how much time it stays over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico will determine just how powerful this system could get. You may ask yourself, what is a potential tropical cyclone? Well, it's basically the term the National Hurricane Center gives a system that is expected to become a tropical cyclone over the next 24 to 48 hours. And this also allows them to go ahead and start issuing watches and warnings. We've got a portion of the southwestern Florida coast under tropical storm warnings already. We are expecting this to get stronger. Let's talk about some of the named storms that we've had so far for this season. And of course, we've had Alberto, where we did have some impacts, especially along the coast across southeast Texas. We had Barrel, where we got a direct hit, unfortunately, back on July 8th. And many of you still likely cleaning up from the aftermath of Barrel. And then we briefly had Chris. So this system, if it develops over the next one to two days, which it likely will, would be named Debbie. So I definitely think there's a high chance now for Tropical Storm Debbie rolling right into the eastern Gulf of Mexico and likely making landfall right around the western portion of Florida. The big bend of Florida likely as we go into Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening and Sunday night. So here is the latest track for potential tropical cyclone four. This is the latest advisory at 4 p.m. Currently moving to the west northwest around 16 miles per hour. So it's moving fairly quickly. That's actually a good thing because of course if this slows down and sits over one area for a long period of time, that would increase the flooding issue, the flood threat over Cuba. So right now it is interacting with land. Of course, it's over central Cuba and it does have winds at this point around 30 miles per hour. So as it continues to interact with Cuba, it's not really going to be allowed to become very strong. But notice once it starts to move away from Cuba as we go into Saturday morning, it is expected to become a tropical depression, so it will get a little bit stronger. And then look at this. It will quickly likely become a tropical storm as we go into Saturday night and Sunday morning with winds around 40 miles per hour. By that time, it is in the eastern Gulf of Mexico over some very warm water, which will allow it to strengthen. And it is still just offshore of that Florida Gulf Coast. So we will have to watch this closely. Notice at that time, early Sunday morning, just to the south and west of Tampa Bay. All right, let's keep going. As we go into Sunday afternoon, now it's up to 50 mile per hour winds likely, and it could get even stronger than that. Still over the warm waters of the eastern Gulf of Mexico and getting close to northeast Florida, right around the big bend of Florida. So as we go into the future, notice it likely will make landfall if it continues on this path Sunday evening, into early Monday, and that likely would be between Tallahassee, Gainesville, and Tampa Bay, then rolling over Jacksonville likely as we go into Monday, and then racing up towards Georgia and the Carolinas, kind of riding right along the coast for Monday and Tuesday, still with some decent wind in that, where we could still have some issues with some strong wind gusts and also some very heavy rain could lead to flooding issues. And yes, there will be the potential for storm surge. So the good news with this track is that it is not at this point expected to come anywhere close to the Houston area. So that is good news for us. Of course, we are still trying to recover from all of the damage and debris that Hurricane Barrel left over our area. As far as what you can expect is with a timeline, right now, as I mentioned, potential tropical cyclone four is currently over Cuba. It is gonna push into the Eastern Gulf of Mexico Saturday morning into the afternoon. Then it likely will make more of that sharp 
curve or turn to the north and it is going to push north likely staying just offshore of the western Florida coast. So passing by Tampa, passing by the a Sarasota area, but it is going to likely make landfall as we go into Sunday evening into early Monday. We are going to have the potential for some very heavy rain and also some strong wind gusts with this maybe close to hurricane force wind gusts, although the official track and the official forecast does not strengthen this to hurricane Debbie at this time, but we likely will have tropical storm Debbie very soon. All right, let's check out our exclusive Fox model and you'll see this system right over Cuba at this point. Putting this into motion, it quickly brings it up just to the west of Tampa as we go through the weekend, likely by Sunday, making landfall Sunday into Monday, and then racing up the Georgia and Carolina coast as we go through early next week. But notice what's happening over towards Houston. Things are quiet. There may be one or two showers and storms popping up in the heating of the day, but otherwise I'm not expecting much as far as any major tropical impacts for us. We will be on the western side of this system, so that's the quiet side. So I don't think we're gonna have any major concerns. But if you did have maybe cruise plans, maybe a cruise that was leaving from Florida or just a vacation to some of the great destinations of Florida, you certainly could be dealing with some delays and some issues as this system is expected to bring rounds of heavy rain, which could delay flights and of course another big threat for flooding. Right now, our models are showing this moving over Florida, likely the Florida Peninsula, then the Florida Panhandle fairly quickly. So hopefully we won't have significant flooding, but I do think that will be an issue. All right, let's check out another model. This is our GFS model. We were looking at the Fox model earlier. GFS model by Sunday morning has this right around Tampa Bay, likely close to making landfall or in the process of making landfall. Then it pushes over northeast Florida, likely Jacksonville up to the Georgia coast on Monday morning and then skirting the Carolina coast with heavy rain and that threat for wind and a little storm surge and of course dangerous rip currents. All of the hazards that you have associated with a land falling tropical system. So we've got to watch this closely. It looks like it's going to be a problem for the southeastern U.S. for this weekend through early next week. But of course you may have friends, you may have family there, you may have travel plans there. So make sure to keep in mind that there will likely end up being some delays if you are heading in that direction. Well, since Hurricane Barrel hit us right here in Houston, we've kind of had quiet weather out there in the tropics for the most part, at least for the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. A large reason why it's because we had a lot of thick Saharan dust out there, and that is indicated by the dark brown colors. But notice we've got a lot of gaps in that Saharan dust as we go into the next few days because it is starting to kind of clear out, disperse, become a little less thick, a little less dense, and that will mean that we will have a higher shot for more tropical systems likely building in as we go into the next few weeks, the next month, August, September, typically the busiest portions of hurricane season. So that is something we will have to monitor closely because things can get crazy in a hurry. And these systems, as we found out with Beryl, can also make a last minute turn. So we don't want that to happen. But for now, I think Houston looks safe from any tropical threat from what will likely be Tropical Storm Debbie in the next day or so. As far as the month of August, of course, we are now into August and these are some of those zones where we likely have a higher chance for tropical development. Of course, that would be just offshore of the east coast of the U.S., the central Atlantic back towards the Caribbean islands. That's where we've been monitoring this system. We moved over those spots the last few days and now it's over Cuba and likely impacting Florida for this weekend. Even over into the Gulf of Mexico, there is a decent shot that we could see tropical cyclone formation for the month of August. That chance grows even bigger for the month of September. In fact, as I've been telling you day by day, September is usually the busiest time of hurricane season and that peak of hurricane season right around September 10th. So I think we're going to miss out on any major impacts or any impacts for that matter from what will be tropical storm Debbie. 
But of course, we've got to get through the rest of August, September, that Saharan dust starting to kind of clear out. And that leaves us with a lot of very warm water out there and conditions that will be favorable for more tropical cyclone formation. So we are going to have to watch things closely, but I think for now we are looking good across the Houston area.